Hey guys, it's Max Convexity. Welcome to the Daily Cover Caller Midday Edition, where I talk about option strategies and option strategy ETFs. That's what I specialize in here. Let's go see what the, is on the agenda for today. All right, we'll start off with the heat map like we always do and see what's moving. Then also I wanted to remind everyone to check out my interview with Howard Chan from Curve. Uh, it's The interview's been out about an hour and if you haven't got a chance to watch it yet, go watch it. Uh, we'll also look at the defiance and yield max strike prices and see how they're doing right now. We're also going to look at some delta neutral trades or the, the Tesla crash delta neutral trade. We'll also check out some charts. And then at the end, we're going to look at our meme uh, stock option trades. So those, those trades expire today, so it's time to roll out. So we'll roll out into one for next week. We'll look for a trade for next week. Okay, thanks for being here this morning. Let's start over here with the heat map. See what's shaking. All right, well, semiconductors, leverage semiconductors, gold and silver, down, Bitcoin up. Indexes are kind of neutral. I mean, only down half a point. The Qs are down almost a full point. So let's, everything else is pretty much, everything else is pretty much flat to down slightly. All right, let's check out the profit boxes for Defiance and see where they're at today. Shoot, we've already, we we were in the profit box earlier this morning. We were above it for a while. Now we just uh, went out of the bottom of it. So we're close to a low for the day. So that's not uh, not good if you're a bull or not good if you sold that, if you sold that option, because when you're underneath the bottom line, then you start incurring a loss. Same thing with the S&P. It was with inside the profit box, but it is now uh, taking on water here. Okay. Now we'll check Russell. This is for IWMI. These guys open right about at break even at the bottom line have just been grinding sideways today. Okay. So now let's check these out on the spreadsheet. Triple QI. Let's see how these guys are. See how these guys are doing. All right. So triple QI. What did these guys do? They sold 129 options for 134 dollars. Well, right now it would cost 175 dollars to buy those damn things back. So. These guys are trying to make 1.7 million, but right now they're underwater about 500,000. For the month, that would take them to down 16 cents per share. However, the dividend estimate is still 60 cents per share. JEPY on JEPY, let's see what they got going on today. So they sold the 50 55 55 strike for twenty dollars and twenty nine cents right now that is in the money quite a bit for just forty five dollars in the money so they're trying to make four hundred thousand but they're losing five hundred thousand right now third loss in a row for these guys if it if it holds on well i'm sorry no well yeah it is third loss in a row if it holds on one of them was a gigantic one too more than a percent loss three days ago. In any event, these guys are down 10 cents a share on the month and the dividend estimate is 46 cents, which is the same as it paid, actually paid last month. So now we'll check IWMY and then USOY. All right. So these guys sold the 2210 strike for $22. Right now, the market is, remember, I showed you the chart and it was pretty flat. It's trading at 21.89 and change. We'll see how many points that is in the money. I bet it's about 20 points in the money, something like that. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm good, aren't I? I am good. Okay, so these guys were trying to make 1.4 million, but they're still barely hanging on to 88,000 of it. All right, so these guys are 23 cents a share on the month up. Good job, IWMI. Now let's check out USOI. This is the, the high yield oil fund. All right, so these people have two options open. I keep saying these guys, but uh, let me see. I have an error right there. We'll fix that. They have two options open. They have the 79 and a half strike open and they have the 82 strike open. Let's see what that looks like graphically. Oil, oil selling off, isn't it? Look at that. Okay, so these strikes are staggered. The, the bottom strike uh, expires at the end of the day today. So that so top max profit is 79 and a half. Unfortunately, right now the market's trading at $78.36, but uh the, so that's bad news for this one. This one expires and it looks like we're going to take a loss on it. Let me move it back here a little bit. I think I drug it out too far. This higher one up here, they rolled into next week. So they don't, it doesn't expire till Wednesday. So they don't have to do anything with it right away. Okay. Um, let's go to yield max. Now I always start with Tesla because of Tesla and crash. Well, look at that. Crash is going to hit their strike just perfect, it looks like. If you're a crash shareholder, it looks like you're going to be max profit or close by the end of the day, depending on where this goes. But the top line of this box is max profit. And this, this is a covered put they sold, a 237.50 covered put. Well, that's a nice job. That's right there, our max profit. Now, uh, this, or I'm sorry, that, Yes, that is a put. These the yellow boxes are calls, covered calls that the bullish fund Tesla sold. Now this one, this, they're staggered also. This covered this covered call, the two seventy six expires today. When they staggered some into next week, they have some two eighty two fifties that go into next week. But these these options are doing fine as well. Nothing's blown out as long as the as long as the markets between. The red strikes, which are the covered puts, the yellow strikes. If you're a Tesla crash delta neutral trader, you're happy. Okay. But also if you just don't crash by itself, it's been a it's been a decent week. And if you own uh Tesla by itself, it's been a decent week. Tesla's just gone straight sideways. I bet you both of these funds outperformed the underlying this week. Okay, so now let's check NVIDIA. All right, so NVIDIA, these managers, they, uh, they've they been selling off, and so they closed out these strikes up here. They expired at the end of the day anyway, but they closed them out for pennies on the dollar, and they rolled down here to this 126 into next week. So they rolled down and out, down and out in Beverly Hills. That was a good movie, Nick Nolte. All right, so uh, now let's look at all. Oh, I got good news here. Well, the good news is we're tracking Google now. We're tracking Google's profit boxes. They sold one uh, for next week, and it's the 195 strike. So we'll start, we'll add Google to the list. So now we do AMD, AMZY, GUI. Um, Tesla Crash, uh, Coinbase, Mr. or Misty and NVIDIA. And unless I forgot one, I think that's it. All right. Amazon's been selling off about like some of these other big tech ones have. Their strikes aren't in any danger of going in the money or anything for sure. Their nav's getting hurt right now, though. Uh, let's look at. Do we look at AMD? I forgot if I pulled up AMD yet. Well, AMD's been selling off too, just like NVIDIA and Amazon, but their strikes are definitely in no danger of going in the money, but their NAV's not, not doing very well this week. 
let's check out Coinbase so we can see how Coney's doing. Wow, Coinbase is rallying today. Nice job, Coinbase. Really nice job there. Coinbase trying to break out. Now, the bad news is I believe they're kind of started. Hang on a second. Actually, I missed a trade right here. They bought the 227.50 back and they sold the 275. So these guys have rolled out. These guys were capped. Their options went in the money first thing Monday morning. They gapped over their freaking strike price. They've been capped the whole time, and they finally rolled out to next week. So now they have this much room to appreciate. If you're a visual person, they, they can get to the top line by Friday, which is right here. So if you look at the angle they're going, that's kind of what they're aiming for. That's the way uh, that's the way these uh, strategies are designed to work. All right. So I believe that's all. Now let's go to the Tesla crash trade. And I've been working on a spreadsheet for this and I apologize about it, but about the looks of it. But I finally have it functioning where it's giving me it's outputting data that's helpful now for a while. I can even get to do that. OK, so. Um, Here's the, the here's the price for crash. Crash is at 1370. Okay. Here's the price for Tesla. Tesla's at 1671. So, you know, they're both down from where they started. Uh, here's the daily change on Tesla. Tesla's daily change is uh, that's not right. There's no way that's right. Okay, so forget about that. Uh The daily change doesn't, I don't use that. I, I need to take that. I need to get rid of that equation. I don't use that for anything anyway. Okay. So what I do is I measure the, I measure every time Tesla pays a dividend, and every time crash pays a dividend. I, I put it here. The right side is Tesla. Tesla paid a 68 cent dividend. So that gives them 68 cent dividend. Well, then on the left side over here on June 6th, crash paid a dividend too. Crash paid a 95 cent dividend and Tesla paid another dividend, 64 cents this time. So uh, I put both of those together. So then all three of those dividends on a cumulative basis, since these two have been around since inception, are $2.27, which equals 6.58% yield on cost right now. That's, that's uh, pretty good. Then there's another dividend payment gets paid. Crash gets 81 cents. Uh, Tesla gets a dollar. Throw that into the dividend kitty. That makes the cumulative kitty $4.08 and eight, and eight cents right now, just you know, a month and a half into this, which is a 13.54% yield on cost. So that's pretty good. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Here's the this column right here. Column in is the is the pairs trade, and this is the delta weighted pairs trade. Right now, if you had equal delta weightings of each, you're down about twenty seven percent. Okay, that's just on NAV. If you throw the distribution into it, you're down 13.99%. Okay. Now, here's a chart. Um, I don't know if I should give this its own page. I'm just going to leave this here. But here's a chart. Okay. The red line is including the distribution. So you can see uh, a few days after uh, crash was incepted, Tesla paid a dividend. So Tesla's dividend is causing the red line, which is the including distribution line, to be slightly higher even from the beginning. Whenever Tesla crash pair was down because of the dividend, because of the Tesla dividend, the, it was uh, the the including the distribution, the total return was a little bit higher. Then right here on June 6th, both funds paid a dividend. So then there was a pretty big disparity between the return with the dividend and the return without the dividend. 
the return without the dividend, the NAV return was actually negative uh, and dropping. Luckily, though, because of the because of the dividend, you know, it's it's holding the total return, it's making the total return better. Then down here on uh, July, in July, they paid both funds paid another dividend, and now there's a pretty big disparity. If you just the just the NAV of these two of this pair trade is down nearly thirty percent, but when you put the dividends back in, uh, it's it's down a little bit less than fifteen percent. All right. So I'll keep showing this chart. I won't have to explain it that much every day, but uh, and I'll make a better chart and a better spreadsheet where it's easier to uh, easier to understand. I have all weekend to do that. OK, so now let's see what else we have to talk about. Um, uh, we could look at some charts, uh, but. Let's do this. Let's blow up the charts today because we've been kind of looking as we've been flipping through everything. Let's talk about earnings trades. And I like to do earnings trades different than a lot of other influencers uh, do them. I use double diagonals or it's also called straddle strangle swaps. Or you could even call it a calendar trade. But I, I use this calendar method and I really like it. So I'm going to show we're going to get into option strat and see. I made some content with a couple of trades. Let's see how they're doing. All right. Yeah, this meme trade. And then I had a small meme trade. Uh, but the bottom three are all, are all meme trades. The bottom one expires today. So in real life, this is this is how these trades work. This is <clears throat> max loss was about 225 bucks. And this thing, you could take it off right now for about a 50 or $60 gain. You sold this 30 call right there for a dollar, and it's only worth two cents right now. That's huge. You sold this 25 put for a dollar 36, it's only worth 10 cents right now. That's huge. That's paying for you for these for this long uh strangle so you you paid a dollar 80 for this call and it's only worth 68 cents which sucks but it's being but it's being paid for by the short positions you paid 88 cents for this and it's only worth 19 cents now but once you include the short positions that you're way ahead on especially this one sold for a dollar seven it's, it's only worth two cents this is what makes the trade up now, trade expires at the end of the day. You could either take it off right now or you could, if you wanted to, you could hang on because if the price goes up, if, if something happens before the end of the day and, and the price of GameStop goes to 30 bucks or something, this trade would be worth the $200 profit instead of a $50 or $60 profit in any event. All right. So I'm just going to do this. Let's just do... Uh, Let's just do close trade, close trade. All right. So now let's, I'm going to show you guys how to build a GME trade into next week. Cause now we need one into next week. So I always start, I go to option strat and I say, I always start the double diagonal. Okay. The first thing you usually have to change is the dates. I want, I want the short legs to expire next week, which is the 26th, the long legs to expire the week after that, which is August 9th. Okay, so generally I pull the strikes in a little bit and then I zoom out and see and see what the risk reward looks like. This the red area is the risk and the, the green area is the reward. And I try to see if I can come up with something favorable. Um, the first thing I like to do is find a find an option that's overpriced to sell this 27 call is it's a hundred IV. Um, let's go maybe to the 28 call. It costs 66 cents. It's 108 IV. Let's try to sell maybe the 30. And you see the 30 all that way out there is 45 cents. So
now I'm moving these sliders around and I'm trying to find a risk reward uh, situation that I can be happy with. Okay. So here's the trade. And it may not look like much right now, but volatility is kind of low. We're playing for a pop in volatility. So a person could put this double diagonal on into next week. So if you're selling the 30 call for 47 cents, it expires next Friday, but you're buying the 28 and a half call for a dollar a dollar forty five. that expires the week behind that. So that'd be August 9th. Then in the same thing on the put side, you're selling a put that expires next week and buying, buying a put that expires the week after. So you're selling the 26 put for $1.50. But then to hedge that, you're buying the 25 put that expires the next week for $1.50. All right. So this is what your profit and loss graph looks like. And you have about $212 of total risk. So the way this trade loses is if the price of GME goes down, the price of GME goes below 20, you lose all of it. That's it's a max loss, $200. Okay. Per, per contract. Now, if the price of GME goes to the right or the volatility goes up and the price goes to the right, you stand to make more money. Even if the price doesn't go to the right, even if the price doesn't move, if the volatility just increases, which it will if Warren Kitty tweets, that trade will go from being a $50 winner to a $100 winner. I mean, it makes a big difference because this is this trade is long volatility. You want to put a trade like this on when volatility is relatively low. And after you have it on, if volatility goes up, you can profit additionally. So, uh, that's, that's why I like these trades so much. It gives you long exposure to volatility, cover calls in most and in other income strategies don't. They give you short exposure to volatility, which creates other problems. You remember Volmageddon? So, um, so I really like these double diagonals. So there's one for GME. So we will save it and we will monitor next week. So GME meme trade okay now i'm also going to show you guys uh, these million dollar baby trades so i guess the market's selling off right now look these are up thirteen thousand dollars jeez um so this guy is a guy that has a million dollars and wants to hedge it so he buys he buys uh, SPX puts. He buys an SPX put spread. He buys the 5,300, sells to the 5,000. He does that eight times, but then he buys one additional. This is kind of a, oh, it's kind of a ratio spread. But in any event, this gives him protection all the way till New Year's Eve. Cost $34,000 though. But you can see right now, it, it said the option calculator says the trade should be worth about a $14,000 profit. But look at that. If the market drops, like uh, the market drops 1% today, that trade's worth $18,000. If it drops 2%, this position's worth $26,000. Basically, this is a get out of jail free card for the, for the pullback that we're in the middle of right now that we're going to have coming into this fall. So this is a get out of jail free card for somebody that has a million dollar portfolio. Million dollar portfolio is up over the past year. A million dollar portfolio that's in growth uh, is up $250,000. So yes, this trade costs $34,000, uh, but it's protecting a $250,000 gain. If you didn't do this trade and the market sold off, which I believe it's going to, you could lose the whole year's gain. All right. So that's enough content on Million Dollar Baby and that's enough content on the GME trade. So we will be back next week and we'll we'll follow the Million Dollar Baby trade and we'll follow up the GME trade. We'll see how they're doing. And uh, we also have Tesla earnings next week and I have a Tesla pre-earnings trade. It's another one of these double diagonals and it's not doing as well as the other ones. It's 
it's losing money right now. It has about $700 worth of risk, but it's down a couple hundred dollars right now. But this uh, Tesla's earnings are next Tuesday or Wednesday. So I'm anticipating that next week, especially Monday and Tuesday, volatility will pop. And if it does, then hopefully if it does pop and Tesla's price goes up, this trade can still make money. If not, this trade may be a loser. We'll see, but we'll we'll check that. We'll check the Tesla pre-earnings trade out and we'll check the uh, GME trade out. Okay. All right, guys. I appreciate you all being here. You have a great day.